there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at these um, new pencils. These are the Cezanne pencils from Creative Mark, which is a proprietary trademarked uh, brand under Jerry's Artorama or owned by Jerry's Artorama, which is a big United States art supplier. And we're gonna see how they perform. I'm gonna show you some artwork I made with these and um, talk about them a little bit today. I did go over these pencils a bit in the big um, colored pencil comparison I live streamed last week, uh, but this is just gonna go in a little more in depth with this pencil. So these are named after Paul Cezanne, the impressionistic painter. There is one of his uh, artworks lithographed on the cover of this matte tin. The tin I found to be pretty good quality, although when it came to me, one of the hinges was disengaged, so I did have to use pliers and fix that, and I did scratch the paint a little bit. Um, that's probably just a fluke, but I thought I'd mention it. I did find the tin to be decently sturdy, and inside, you'll notice that the colors are swatched on the inside of the lid on the 120 set. I can't speak for the 72 set, but I like that because if you're trying to put your pencils back in spectrum order, then you can see what numbers, um, how they would go, how you'd line them up. So you can check to see if you're missing any, or, you know, if you have a bunch of pencils out or you've been coloring with the kids, um, you know, you wanna make sure you have them all. Or if you're missing one, you'll know what one you're missing. Uh, so I like that. The trays are actually fairly sturdy. Usually trays are very flimsy in these budget priced pencils and these are quite sturdy. There are three trays full of color here and the color assortment is really nice I thought. They have um, half of the barrel is a kind of like a matte metallic silver and the other half is a is supposed to be the color as it uh, should appear from the lead but I, I really recommend looking at the tip of the lead to get your color um, bearings or make a swatch. I don't like to swatch out my regular colored pencils. I do my watercolor pencils, but not my regular ones because I find looking at the lead gives me a good enough um, idea of what the pencils look like. So this brand comes in a set of 72 or a set of 120. I think they're made, they have a watercolor line too, which I have not tried, but those actually have some smaller packs available to try out. There's no open stock availability with this. So if you used up a color, you wouldn't be able to just buy that one color. You You'd have to either um, order a new pack of pencils or look for a comparable brand and buy a single pencil in the closest shade that you can find, which I don't think would be a huge deal this day and age because there's certainly a lot of colored pencils out there selling open stock. Now, uh, Jerry's Adorama has another house brand of pencils, the Soho line of colored pencils, which are available open stock. And those are made, I believe, by Create a Color. These pencils are made in China, I believe. Yeah, made in China. And I've heard, like, at least anyways, with reviews of the 72 set I've seen on Amazon, I had, there were several reviewers that said they, they are the exact same pencil as the Schrupter Farben and the Sargent Art Supreme, but then I've also seen reviewers say they absolutely are not the same pencil. So you kind of got to take that with a grain of salt. I haven't tried the 72 set of these pencils, which have a gold barrel instead of a silver barrel, and look just like the Schrupter Farben pencils, but since I haven't used those, I really can't comment on that. But I do find that um, when kind of stores do like their store brand or a proprietary brand for their company, oftentimes they're coming out of the same factories that other companies are getting their pencils from. So, it, you know, there's a good chance that they are the same, but I can't say for sure or not. That would just be a speculation. In any event, we're going to review the quality of these and I'll show you some artwork that I did with them. So um, these felt really comfortable to hold. I would say they're you know, a very standard size a uh, pencil about the same size as a Prismacolor. Let me grab one here to compare. I would say they are the same size as the Prismacolor. I would say the leads are maybe a smidgen thinner than this Prismacolor. They say they're a 3.3 millimeter lead and I think the Prismacolors are either a 3.8 or a 4. So uh, I do think the Prismacolor leads are eensy bit bigger. The performance of these I found to be closer to a Polychromos to that a Prismacolor. They feel oilier. They say they're wax-based, but they do feel um, more oily to me. They don't have a lot of dust. They don't smudge a lot, and you get a lot less glare with these versus Prismacolor. So that why, that's kind of another reason why they feel a little more like an oil base than a wax base to me. Um, and now comparing these to a Polychromos, um, they work and layer very similarly, but there is less pigment in these. These are not going to 
pack quite the punch that a polychromos will, but it stands to reason for the price. The 24, the um, 72 set will set you back $24.99, and the, um, the 120 set will set you back $59.99. Um, they have a regular price of, they have a list price, a list price air quotes of $119.95. They have a Jerry's regular price of $79.99. And then they have the introductory price for $59.99. And I think the price on Amazon is the same, but I'm looking at the Jerry's website right now. So pencil to pencil, the 20, the uh, 72 set is cheaper per pencil than the, um, than the 120 set, I believe. Yeah. Cause you get 72 for 25 or you get 120 for 60 so yeah that's that's cheaper it's cheaper to get the 72 set per pencil if you want and if you want to try them out now the like i mentioned i think i mentioned um sometimes when companies kind of private label products for their stores now okay I, this is just my speculation i have to say that because i don't know maybe the 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 Cezanne, maybe creative mart got together with um with some companies that I want you to make these pencils just for me. Don't make them for anybody else. I want an exclusive product made exclusively for me and don't use a formulation for anything else. These are our specs. This is what we want. That might be the case. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case with most budget pencils because if something like that was being put together, I think it would be a lot more expensive. So that, and I, I think I would go the, the, the extra step of making them available open stock. So this is speculation. Um, these are just my opinions. So, so just take with it, take it with a grain of salt. This is my opinions. Um, so sometimes when you have a 70, you have different size sets within one of these private labeled sets of products. Um, there, the quality is different between the size set you have, like art and flies watercolors, their 24 set and 48 set and 72 set, they're made from different factories. So they're not the same paints. So if you love the 24 set and you bought the 72 set, you might not like that one because it's made from a different company. So it's just something to be aware of when you're buying inexpensive supplies. Now, if you're looking at this compared to what Polychromos cost, I mean, Polychromos, I think the cheapest I've seen them recently is like $179 for a set of 120 versus $60 for the set of 120. You know, so it's clearly not going to have as much pigment and, um, you know, your you're not paying as much. I want to say get what you pay for, but in a lot of cases, you, you know, you've got to kind of look at price and let that way um, how much you expect a material to perform. That said, I thought these performed quite well. So there's, there is a couple, well, I think there's only real one, uh, a couple little issues here. Um, one issue with this pencil that, um, that I had is that their white is weak. Now I have that issue with polychromos. I have the issue with most colored pencils. Um, Prismacolor has my favorite white pencil. I use it a lot. You could use a white Prismacolor with these and it would really be a worthwhile investment. It would really give you much brighter brights, uh, whiter highlights. It would blend in. It would help you blend colors together. It would just be a wonderful thing to have with this set. I find most, especially if the pencil tends to feel more oily, I find their whites to be weak. Um, also, they're black. I would, their black's okay. I think I still would prefer to have like a Prismacolor black just to get those super, super rich tones. But um, color-wise, that's my only real issue. Um, the other thing that I had an issue with is some of the cores are not centered. So if you're using a lot, like I was using this green a lot in the background, um, if you look here, I sharpen it, you only can see about um, maybe like an eighth of an inch of tip on this side, but then you see like half an inch of lead on this side because the core is not centered. So when I sharpen it, um, I'm getting that long you know, I'm getting a long piece of wood on this side and I'm getting nothing on this side. So with pencils like this, you're best off sharpening them with a knife. Now, I didn't get any breakage with any of these pencils, sharpening them or coloring with them, even if I use some use quite a bit of pressure. So that's good there. The leads are nice and strong, uh, but it is a bummer that you'll find some pencils that, you know, have uncentered leads and you're just going to run through them more often because as you sharpen them, you just end up sharpening away the good product that you want to be coloring with. Now that said, I did use that quite a bit in the background for this piece here. So, um, you know, so yeah, I did use it quite a bit. So I want to put that, that out there as well. Um, but I did notice, you know, there were, there was a fair amount of pencils that the leads weren't centered. I can see there's way more, way more wood if I, can you see that? See what I mean about it not being centered? It's hard to tell if you can't look down the bottom of the barrel, but if you see that you've got a lot of lead on one side and you've got hardly anything on the other, that's an uncentered lead. So 
you can use a knife to sharpen it, but then you're not going to get those sharp points that you might want for details. These do hold a point quite well, which I was impressed with. Um, and I thought the, the quality of the pigments in there were pretty decent. Not as strong as polychromos, but I wouldn't expect them to be at this price point. I also found that the... Um, the indexing does not necessarily isn't a perfect match for the lead color, so you might want to scrap a paper or scrap of the paper you're using handy just to test out a color if you're unsure of how it might look. Um, I thought it had a pretty nice variety of colors. Some of the colors are quite samey. Some of the greens are quite similar. Um, you know, so that's, and some of the blues are quite similar. However, if you've got, if you can't replace individual colors, having a couple, having some colors that are very popular, repeated or near repeated, isn't necessarily bad things, and you can just use that color as, you know, if you use up another one. Um, I probably, if I would use it, was using up a color, unless I was using up a significant amount of these pencils, I would probably use that as an opportunity to upgrade to a nicer pencil. Now, the thing I really liked about these is the, since they do layer well, and um, they sharpen well, and, you know, you can do a lot of techniques with these, I think these were, would be a great way to get a lot of practicing in. Say, if you want to um, do some techniques and you're worried about wasting your more expensive pencils, I think this is a great way to go because you can get that practice under your belt. So I'm going to go, I'm going to show you the artwork I did in the order in which I did it. Um, so here, this is the first thing I did. I was just playing around with these last weekend and I painted the strawberry um, and I used 11 colors. I did use the white, but I had to go in with some white gouache. I used, um, I used some bleed proof white to get some of the highlights that needed a little bit extra pop at the end. Um, you know, so I think even even if I was using Prismacolor or uh, Polychromos, I think I'd still need to go in with some white gouache or uh, or something to kind of pump it up a little bit. Maybe like the uh, brush and pencil titanium white. I'll talk about that in a minute because I actually use that in another project. But I used 11 colors. I thought I got really good saturation. This is on um, pretty inexpensive watercolor paper. This is on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Um, I would recommend using a paper that's got a bit of tooth to it, which is kind of like a, I mean, like a texture to it, because that's going to allow you to put down more color and it's going to let you get more saturation with these pencils because they are not as pigmented as, um, as like Prismacolor or Polychromos. So that's, you know, the more texture, the longer it's going to take you to fill that texture, but the more media you can put down to get those rich, luscious results. Luscious. The next thing I did was in a coloring book, and I colored this artichoke. Um, I liked the way it came out. It was quite tedious. I, After about three petals, I was like, oh, I am not a coloring book person. I get very bored. This paper is very smooth, um, and I did actually use a, a really, really super dark green. I felt like I needed a dark green Prismacolor to to pump up the darks and a white to brighten the, the highlights. The thing I did like was their, like, that really bright purple color. I was able to go in and lay that over on top of stuff and it still popped. So this wasn't done completely in the pencils because I didn't get that rich dark that I wanted. Um, but I'm going to do a blending experiment at the end on some drawing paper so I can kind of show you um, the method there. So, uh, but they did blend well and they performed pretty well and I didn't get any hand fatigue working with it, which is really nice. So this next one I'm going to show you I did on um, toned watercolor paper by Hannah Mule. And this is just a little goldfinch I sketched out. I used some odorless mineral spirits to just kind of blend the colors. That worked really good. These blended very well with odorless mineral spirits. Um, I layered and layered and layered and layered. It took all kinds of pigment. I was able to apply it thickly, like on the branch, to give me almost like an oil paint appearance. And um, I was really pleased with how this worked. They handled really well. This was on toned paper, and honestly, this was a test to see if the colors would show up on the toned paper. I was honestly a little skeptical that the that the white and light gray and yellow would pop on the tone paper and it did and I did the highlight with a white pencil I didn't use anything else other than the Cezanne pencils on this and I was I feel like I was able to build enough color and volume um, and texture to get the job done so I, I was really pleased and the more I was using these pencils the more I liked it so in this example I'm really pleased with how this came out I'll have a um I'll have a time of either a tutorial or a time lapse of the goldfinch and I will have the time lapse of this bird this took me quite a long time on uh, sketchbook Sunday some point in the near future and I'll also have the long version with some other repetitive bits cut out on critique club in probably uh, probably this weekend, so if you're interested in that, you can find that there. But this was fun because I used um, 
my color pencil, my color pencil powder blender, which is a, it's a powdery product by Brush and Pencil that I bought myself as a treat after I finished Inktober last year. And I used this UART premium sanded pastel paper. because so I wanted to see how this is going to work on a sanded paper with a, with the color pencil powder blender. And, um, and I really loved it on that. It works so well. And one of the things that keeps me from using this stuff and this paper is it, the paper's kind of expensive. I think that pad of 9x12 was like 25 bucks or something. And um, this is just a half a sheet because it's so precious. And, you know, the colored pencil, powder blender, and all their accoutrements and fixatives and stuff. I spent some money on there, so I'm all kind of like... Um, but actually, the powder blender and stuff lasts forever. It's just the uh, the paper, and I would typically use polychromos with this, but they're kind of precious because they're kind of expensive. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try this on there because I won't worry if I use up a pencil. Um, I really like the way this came out. So um, I found it layered really well. My colors were super vibrant on this because this is a sanded paper, which is what it sounds like. It's like a, a fine sandpaper. It's a 400 grit sandpaper, essentially, that's acid free. You could get some sandpaper and you could try it out and see if you like that and then buy the acid free fancy art paper if you want to in the future. Um, but I really enjoyed doing this project and I really love how it came out. So at the end, when I needed to do those little, um, those little flicks of bright white feathers that are kind of backlit and glowing from a from the light, uh, the white pencil was not going to cut it, so I used this product, uh, no, not this one, this one right here, it's called Titanium White, it's basically like the lead from a colored pencil, a white colored pencil, and then you mix it with this um, adhesive, it's called uh, Touch Up Texture, which you could paint anywhere in a painting that you've lost tooth and you need to build up more color, so I used those together to make a little paint, and I painted in those little, those little flicks of feathers, and I thought it came out really well, um, I love how this came out, and these pencils were perfect for learning the brush and pencil, um, the, the powder blender technique. I really would recommend that if you want to try this out, and you want to try sanded paper, but you're holding back because of how expensive your polychromos, or maybe your other, like, I don't even have any of the Caran d'Ache colored pencils because they're so expensive. So if you're worried about that, then this would be a great one to practice with, kind of like the Art & Fly pencils. I found them very similar to the Art & Fly pencils. Um, I, I felt like the Art, and this is kind of, this is anecdotal because, um, like, the Art & Fly pencils only have 48 colors. So it's kind of like the 48 most potent and robust colors. Uh, so comparing a set of 120, and some of the colors are going to be bold, some of them are going to be soft, some of them are going to be great, some of them are going to be weak. You know, it's kind of hard to make an apples to apples comparison there. Um, chances are the 48 bright colors, I would have similar options in here, but I'm like weighing against all the other colors that I've used too. So I would say either, just depending on what size set you want. Um, the Suzanne per pencil, I think is a little bit cheaper because you can get 72 for... 24 25 dollars and the art and flies are i think like 21 or tw well it depends on who you buy it from on amazon i think it was around 24 dollars for 48 pencils so you know it's a little bit these are a little bit cheaper uh all right so let's do a blending test i just really love how this came out it was really fun to paint too i just enjoyed how much i could layer with these and i didn't get the wax bloom or a lot of dust or smudging or i mean this these just worked really well for that technique and um and yeah, there, it was just so much fun to use them for that. So the more I've used these pencils, the more I've liked them. So if you have any pencils that are similar to these or the other ones that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I suspect might be quite similar, um, then use them more because you'll probably enjoy them the more you use them. So what I did was, I'm not going to color all these, but I figured I might as well stamp a bunch because I thought they were pretty. These are some Stampenda stamps, and I'm just going to do like a petal here. Um, I'm going to pull out some colors. Oh, I shouldn't have closed my thing. Since I fixed the hinge on there, the, these, uh, the lid stays really good, really uh, closed really well on the... Um, on the the box, so that's kind of nice. I'm going to grab a couple colors. I'm going to grab a nice dark red. I'm going to grab a bright crimson red. I'm going to grab a kind of a lighter corally red. And maybe I'll do something like, maybe a, well, you know what? Maybe I'll grab, I don't think I would highlight with white on those. I would probably highlight with like a, maybe like a pastel yellow or something. Um, oh, maybe do like a peach a peach for highlight, something like that. Okay, and we will do, let's do a nice big petal here. I'm gonna zoom in. So get it nice and close. So one thing that I would recommend when you're working with these, 
would be to uh, put in your most contrasty colors first. So I would put in my darkest color. I'm not using any pressure here. Um, that's another thing. I think if you are somebody who uh, struggles with arthritis or any sort of hand, arm fatigue, anything like that, these would be really, really nice. I also want to mention, um, uh, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not compensated in any way for talking about these, but they did send me, Jerry's Artorama sent me these video, these, uh, pencils to review, but I'm not compensated in any other way for this. Then I would go in, so I got my darker shadow in there, but I didn't use a lot of pressure because I don't want to fill the tooth of this paper. Now I'm going to go in in the highlight and I'm going to use this really, really pale peach, really, really uh, low pressure here. It's almost like I'm saving those areas. I want to save some of that dark and I want to save some of that light. And now I'm going to go in with my, this is kind of like the true color I would say of the poppy. I'm going to sharpen it. I know I use an electric sharpener, but it's really obnoxious to listen to. So I'm going to sharpen this just with my little handheld sharpener. I don't know if you can buy these on their own. Color it sharpeners. Fantastic. They came. Oh, now look at that. That's the first breakage I've had out of all of this. Okay. I'm going to use my electric sharpener. Take your headphones out if you're using headphones. <laughs> I left that in because I wanted you to see how long it took me to sharpen it. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I never have issues sharpening a pencil when I am, when I'm using my electric sharpener, which is just, um, it's not really, it's a foray, which is like a store brand Office Depot pencil sharpener that I got at a discount store. So I'm going over that first layer of the dark red and I'm pressing a little bit. So I'm using like a medium pressure, not enough to like make your hands hurt or anything, just enough to like have it stick on top of that. And the paper that I'm using is a uh, sulfate drawing paper. I just thought this might be pretty on a card and I thought this pe this paper would be heavy enough. Now I often will turn my pencil, you just saw me do that, just kind of turn it like a quarter of a turn. And the reason I do that is because it helps it wear evenly on each side so that I always have a nice fresh sharp a point to get in there in the details. Now I'd say this, I'd say this has, um, I don't know, it's a little bit of tooth. It's not really, it's, it's fairly smooth, but it's not super smooth. It's not like cardstock. It's not like Bristol smooth. It's got a little more, um, it's got a little bit more grit to it, but not that much. It's not going to take that many layers. But when I'm doing something like this for card making, um, or maybe I'd use this on a scrapbook layout, I'm not sure. I just thought it was pretty, and I figured I might as well stamp out a bunch and use the whole sheet. Um, I decided that I would, you know, stamp out a few. And, but I don't want to be doing, like, ten layers. I want to be doing this pretty pretty quickly. All right, and then I'm going to do this color here. It's more of, like, a kind of a, I would say, like, a corally orange color. Now, these pencils are not named, which I don't think is a big deal, but um, some people do. It does have, they do have numbers, which is handy. I think some of the first, I don't know if the 72 ones have been corrected or not, but, um, and it does appear that, like, if you, they probably are the same pencils. Maybe they just had the barrel paint color changed because, um, I was looking at the color chart for the 72 set and they do have, all the colors in the 72 set appear to be in the 120 set. Uh, so I don't know if they just decided to go with a different color, maybe so it wouldn't look just like those other brands I mentioned. So now I'm using burnishing pressure. I'm using a lot of pressure on here so that I can blend my colors together. Now, the, as you add this more pressure and you keep layering on top, less is going to stick. So we are doing some layering and doing some burnishing here, but now I'm in the burnishing, burnishing phase. And I don't like to see the grain of the paper, so I'm coloring pretty firmly there. I think I might want to pop that color a little bit more, so I think I'm going to look for a yellow here that I can add in. 
Now I've looked at the tip because if I look at the tip of that, I can see it's more of a warm yellow. But if I look at the the end index, it looks almost like a greenish yellow. So that would be my tip. And if you think that it's just too hard to see those little ends, um, then make your swatch by all means. Make a swatch, and I would tape that to the inside of your of your box, and that way you would just you would know. So this brightens it up quite a bit. Having that yellow in there warms it up, gives it some life. And then I'm going to go back in with this darker color again. And I'm going to add that shadow back in. Now look at the blending there. I think that looks really nice. And it blended really well. It got a lot of layering. I think it's really pretty. We can do a little bit of the green as well um, on one of these leaves. I'll show you that just so that you have a bit of um, a bit of a reference here. We'll get, we'll get three colors there. Now I'm going to be using this one here that's got that. I'm just going to do a portion of this leaf. Um, I'll do, I'll just do this part right here. So I'm gonna, just going to start in here and put my dark to kind of reserve, save my darks, right? I'm just going to go quick. Then I'm going to put in my light to save my lights. I'm not using a lot of pressure. This should not give you any fatigue. And sometimes if you are having some fatigue, like forearm fatigue when you're coloring, it could just be the way you're sitting. Um, that could be giving you some issues. Now I'm going to go in with a mid-tone. I'm going to color over the shadow. I'm going to add some pressure and I'm going to bring that up over the shadow. Um, and I'm going to bring it up about halfway over the lightest color that I put in there. It's very similar to coloring with markers. And then I'm going to go back in with my lightest color with pressure to take a little bit of that sharp tip off the top of that. but. And I'm just going to burnish over. So this is similar to what I did with the artichoke. Actually, if I had gone in, if I knew these pencils better and I had gone in stronger with that darker color, I think it would have been fine. But that coloring book paper does not have as much tooth as this drawing paper. So you can see the little blend there. That came out really nice. So I have to say, all in all, I do, I do approve. I approve this message. I'm Lindsay and I approve this message. Um, I, I do approve these pencils. I don't feel like you need to have a bunch out to create a masterpiece. So you'd probably be fine going with a smaller set, especially since it's cheaper per pencil if you just want to try it out. Um, but I don't know if it's like, I'm one of these people, if I know there's 120 colors, I kind of want the 120 colors. Um, and the fact that there are so many similar colors to one another, I think that if like, if you used up a color, you're gonna have one that's so close, you're not gonna feel like you need to run out. Like those two are so close. It's not like you're gonna have to run out and buy a whole new set if like you run out of this one. Let's see how this one looks. You know, it's pretty darn close. So you definitely can, you know, can get by. Hope you enjoyed this review. I had so much fun filming it. Um, please do check these out. There's a link in the video description. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy crafting.